It's another beautiful morning right here in Kigali, and today we are going to take our breakfast. Had tea here. How do you say bon appetit? We say like bon appetit, but in the Kenyan Rwanda we say like when you want to say like enjoy your food, we say like muriohe, muriohe, muriohe. So it's actually another morning here in Rwanda. Um, I'm still hosting this guy, Osi, the Osi, African Bonchard. Yes, the African Bonchard, yes, he African said Bonchard. it right. Yeah. So actually we're going to take a breakfast like I told you. We had like a beautiful tea here, good tea. Then we had some noodles here. It's really beautiful and today we're going to take a, talk about like YouTube career for like Osman. Like, this guy is a YouTuber, like he's a content creator, you need even like to go on YouTube and check his channel. Remember to subscribe because he has, has like amazing content, so you need to show it. Actually, brother, the reason why I want to host you is because that I heard, I'm not sure if it's true, that you left the Qatar and then come back to Africa to start this like YouTube career, to start like creating content and tell the African, the real African stories. Is that true? It is true, first and foremost. Greetings, beautiful people. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for everybody that support us in one way or the other. To all our brothers and sisters in the diaspora that keep pushing us and encouraging us, salute, we appreciate a thousand exactly. times. Well, thank you, brother, for hosting me also. Yes. I was in Qatar uh, from 2017 to 2019. Actually, went there on a five years contract. But from when I just spent three days in Qatar, yeah. I knew I was not going to finish five years. Yeah. So I reached and loved the whole setting of Qatar and everything. Yeah. But then, apart from loving it, I was challenged. I saw how the country was organized, how it was beautiful, yeah. how it was taking care of its people. And then I was like, damn, why is it not happening in our countries? Because you know what, by the time I went to Qatar, while my stay in Qatar, during that time I felt much safe yeah. in Qatar than I was in my own country. Yeah. But instead of loving it there that I'm feeling super safe, I was like, then who has to bring a change? Who has to do something that I can also feel safe in my own country? Yeah. So I was like, being in Qatar is not going to help. Yeah, sure. I have to go back home and do something. Okay, so like, Osi, you decided to leave to Qatar. Mm -hmm. Come back here. Yes. And uh, you came back. You know, like what we had here in Africa is that we have a lot of youth, a lot of people who are actually working hard to go to those countries, Europe, yes, yes. America and everything. Why do you think that African born child or maybe African kids mm -hmm. can stay in Africa instead of going to Europe and Asia to make money? Actually, that is what myself used to dream about. Yeah. So, until I went there is when I realized no, that is not everything. You know, when we are kids, we even used to think boarding that airplane yeah, yeah, is sure. a big thing. Yeah, big thing. Until yeah. you board a plane, that's when you'll know that a plane is just a mode of transport. Yeah. So when I went to Qatar, I had big dreams. Yeah. I used to think if someone is living abroad, yeah. maybe they just even black money of yeah, the tree. Sure. Or you just wake up one morning and go sweep money in the street and pack in your bags. Sure. So for those of you brothers and sisters that think going abroad is a way for all your dreams to come true, it's wrong. Actually, I take this opportunity to let them know that going abroad is even loading yourself with a lot of responsibility yeah. than what you had here. Well, I understand if someone says like maybe because of the limited opportunities in my yeah. area, in my country, yeah. I'm going to hustle for maybe a specific period of time, yeah. then I'll be back home to invest sure. or start an independent career or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I was in Qatar on my third day, 
I was taken to a job and I was taken to work as a guard in an hotel. But the first day I got the most tired in all my life yeah. than all my years in my country compared. Yeah. So I was like, damn, is this the abroad I thought it was gonna be? Because at least I'd started something in my country and yeah. I was living kind of not so much desperate yeah, life. Sure. But now I'm in a foreign country being the cheapest person. Yeah. So it comes all with a lot of challenges from psychological yeah. challenge. Yeah. Seeing, for example, you were someone who had a family in your country. Sure. Now you are somewhere far away from your yeah, family. Yeah, yeah. From seeing you as someone maybe for some of our brothers or sisters go when she was married or yeah. you had a wife or a girlfriend to seeing that you were in a country where you cannot even say something everything is just determined or like dictated yeah. by your bosses so from seeing that you are in a country yeah. for example you are earning 2000 for yeah. example in Qatar where yeah. I was you are earning 2000 Qatar years yeah. From coming to your country, you thought this was too much money, and yes, you're sure. seeing people spend this for breakfast. Yeah. Like someone goes in a supermarket, not even a supermarket, yeah. in a local shop in a Bakra and does yeah. a shopping of 2000. Just imagine how it makes you feel. It yeah. makes you feel like you are totally nothing. Yes. And nobody wants to feel that. So you get to learn that it is at home where the heart feels at rest. But how have you come back home? Yeah. So if you go abroad, what have you picked? For now, for example, me, after knowing that I'm not going to be here, yeah. but then I was like, I'm not going to be a loser, I'm not going to be a quitter. I'm not going to go back home, home. instantly. Yeah, yeah. As a man, I have to take this as a champion. Sure. So let me do some two years, go back home a different person. Wow. So I told myself, a lot of skills on the yeah. computer because then I had access to the yeah, Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, the so instead of going to the internet to watch movies, yeah. Yeah. instead of going to the internet to play games, I thought myself how to edit videos, how to take pictures, how to operate a camera, how to work online. Yeah. So that if I ever go back home, I can implement this. Yeah, sure. I can work the modern way or I can have something to offer to the community yeah. or I can be able to be the OC, the born child that I always wanted to be. Wow, yes. that's really good. Another question that I had is that in your thought, do you think that this time is best for Africans who are living in Europe, who are living, mm -hmm. living in Asia, who are living in America to come back to be the Africa? Actually, so. let me give a big shout out to Ayam Marwa, yeah. brother over there. I was watching yeah. his videos every single day because I have access to Wi Fi. Yeah, yeah, sure. Ayam Marwa, I should say, inspired me. I was watching his videos in South America, yeah. uh, basically in South America, and I was seeing that. This is the kind of life I wanted. Sure, yeah, yeah. You know, Even for me, me, I'm a big fan of this guy. Yeah. What am I? We saw you too. Then, like what am I? Uh, I am. Yeah. Like, like I was watching I am Mara first. Yes. Then later on, when I saw what the Maya moving from China coming back, I was like, damn. Oh, means I'm not doing a mistake. Yeah, sure. I actually wrote to I am Mara when he was in South America, and I was yeah. like, bro, I'm gonna do this myself. Yeah. But I'm going to put a twist. My theme was to do everything on road. Yeah. Leave alone the pandemic that has twisted things that nowadays I'm flying here yeah. and there. But I was to do things the very rock way to show that other side of Africa yeah. that has happiness, that has a vibe sure. without even too much money. But there is life in our villages, yeah, yeah, there is exactly. life in our people more than what the Western media shows. Yeah, so I was sure. like, okay. Since my brothers are showing the other side, yeah. let me also go show that local way yeah. because I was the born child even yeah. before going to Qatar. Oh. So yeah, that is it. That's really good, man. That's really amazing. Actually, this is what we actually want to tell the people that if you are living abroad, 
what you need to do just even if you are making enough money come back to africa help those community oh, really? like yeah. come back in africa and let's build africa together because africa is like inside us we're born in africa we have brothers in africa we have big families in africa so africa is us so we, we need to come back in africa so the like this is like the last question that i want to ask you is that what is your message to all African diaspora who are living abroad, who are hustling abroad, what the message right now you can sit here and tell them that this is my message to you right now? Because I've been abroad myself, yeah. and you know this channel where you guys can check me out is a new channel. My like, original channel that I started yeah. when I just came out from Qatar was yeah. terminated and put down by YouTube. And you know what? Instead of feeling sorry to myself, yeah. I was very happy it was taken down because then I knew I was doing the right thing. Sure. My message or my main thing on that channel was to show like the opposite of whatsoever the Western media is showing. Yeah. So it was taken down purposely, I know for that. Because it was exposing a lot of truth. Yeah. But during that, I got a lot of the Pan African brothers and sisters. Yeah. A lot of them are willing to repatriate. Some are thinking about it, but yes, they are preparing. My message is, home is the best. And wow. you know what? Home is like this. Wow. Very ready to welcome you. Yeah, exactly. It's not like everyone has to repatriate. Well, you can stay in the diaspora, yes. but for as long as you know Africa is home, that is also a contribution. Sure. Because, for example, you have kids in London or whatsoever yeah. country that you are in, Teach them their mother language. Exactly. Let them know that they originate from Africa. Sure. Let them know that Africa is not just a single, a single big country, but it is a consistence of so many beautiful countries with beautiful weather, beautiful people, beautiful food. Like they, they keep in mind that yeah. whatsoever time, we have to go back and check where we originate from. Yes. So that's what I think. That, and also to know that Home can really provide a lot than yeah. what the Western made, the West can even do. Because, like for example, I've made more money when, ever since I came home yeah. than the money I made in Qatar. Wow, that's yeah. really inspiration, man. And also, like this is the end of our video. Thank you so much, guys, for like actually showing us every time. Please do this for me. Go on YouTube. Go search or see the African yeah. Bunch Yeah. Please check out this channel. He has an amazing content to bring to you guys. And he's still in Rwanda shooting a lot of videos, videos to yes. promote Africa, to promote Rwanda, to promote Uganda. Everyone. Please I have plans to yes. be to every country that is visa free to a Ugandan passport. Wow. I'll be to every country that is visa free to all my, like my, my passport. And then we'll see which other countries that need to apply. Oh, so like yeah. che a lot is coming your way sure yes. brother thank you so much for always like giving us this time to host you man and your story is a really inspiration it's a actually a very long story but because of time yeah yes sure thank you guys uh, we appreciate you loving for loving us for your support for everything please check out this channel please subscribe share this video like this video because we want to share this story to all african diaspora who are living abroad thank you so much appreciate see you soon